What's happening, everybody? This is Hayden Adams, and today we're taking a look at the Bootstrap 5 carousel. We're going to take three pictures of sailboats. We're going to add both indicators for the next and previous. We'll also add placeholders for our three pictures down at the bottom of the page. We'll add captions, and also, if we take a look at this outside of this page, it's also responsive as well. We'll start by just getting three pictures to rotate on the screen. After that, we'll add the next and previous arrows on the left and right side. After that, we'll add the indicators at the bottom to indicate how many slides are in our slideshow. After that, we'll add in some captions. Then for the fun stuff, we'll begin to add some options like do you want a light or a dark mode to this carousel in Bootstrap 5. We'll also change how fast or how slow the pictures rotate. And finally, we can choose between a slide and a fade effect. And with that, let's get started. What's up, everybody? This is Hayden Adams with Designer Who Codes, and I'm all about helping you build better websites. On the left-hand side here is where I have the Bootstrap 5 template, and I've taken Hello World from the top left down to the center, courtesy of the container, with the max height I set up for 100 vertical height, and I set up a flex box, and I put the text in the middle of the page. From here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take out hello world. So let's take him out, let's just say the word test, and to make sure he is taken out successfully. Awesome. Now that I've taken out the hello world, what I wanna do is I wanna bring in the carousel. So I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna say, make sure I got my tabs in order, perfect. I'm gonna say div ID equals carousel example captions. We're gonna use this down the road, so might as well put it in right away. The class I wanna use is carousel, and then we're gonna say the word slide, indicate this is gonna slide the pictures across from one to the next. After this, I'm gonna hit the return key, because I'm gonna lose a little space in here. So you know what, let's do this. Let's do ID, drop it down, Class, drop it down. And after the class, I'm gonna say data BS for bootstrap and interval. In this interval, we're gonna change later on, but for right now, we're gonna say 5,000 for the speed. And we're gonna say data BS for bootstrap. Ride is gonna be the carousel. So we've set our main points up. We'll close our div. I'm gonna make sure we have it closed. We're gonna close the div, not quite sure why it didn't close before. And we'll bring back the word test to make sure nothing's going on. So what I wanna do first is I wanna bring in three pictures, I'm gonna rotate around at 5,000 milliseconds. So I'm gonna take out the word test, indent it in, and say div class equals carousel inner. This is gonna be the inside of our carousel. Then we'll say div class equals carousel item and active. We have to identify which one goes first. And from here is where I'm gonna put in the pictures. So I have three photographs. If I go into my finder, where is the finder? There it is. And if I bring over this folder, I have my images and I have sailboat one, two, and three. So let's add these pictures into our project. I'll say image source equals images sailboat one. Now I also have to add a few classes. So just for spacing purposes, I'm going to drop down the source and then I'll drop down the class and I'm going to say D block. And I'm also going to say with dash 100 and I have to give it some sort of title for the alt information. I'm gonna say alt equals sailboat one. I will do one right there. And we'll self close it up. There we go. Let's bring this back in alignment. And if we save this, let's take a look and see if we can see that one picture shows up on the screen. If I save this, and refresh, there it is. But it's not really a carousel because I only have one picture. So what I have to do is I have to duplicate this one right here. So I'm gonna take the inner and we'll open and close, making sure I have 
I'm sorry, I have the first one here, and we'll take the carousel item active and this div. Let's not take the inner duplicate it. So I'll duplicate it twice more. So now I have three pictures. And since we can't see it rotate with just one picture, I have to change the sailboat from 01 to, oops, let's change the second one from 01 to 02. And we're gonna change the third to three. Now, if I save this, what I should have are three pictures rotating. Hit refresh. And there's picture one, maybe. Come on, I wait for 5,000. Maybe it's not gonna work. Oh, <laughs> because of the active. I'm like, oh man, I can't wait for 5,000. So let me take the active off there too. That's better, because if they're all active, the third is gonna kick into gear. Whew, almost messed that up completely. Now if I refresh the page, the first one is active, and after 5,000 milliseconds, it does rotate to the second one. After 5,000 milliseconds, it rotates to the third one. This is great, but there's no way to stop going to the left automatically. What if I wanna rotate back to the one beforehand? I wanna add some indicators on the previous and the next when it comes to the slideshow. So what I have to do with this design is if I come back over to my code, I wanna add in some controls. So just so we can see the code a little better and not looking at this 24 seven, I'm just gonna hide that piece and I'll just move this over to the left so all we see is our code now on the left hand side. So after this area, what I'm gonna do is I wanna add the controls for previous and also next. So down here at the bottom, there's three divs. The first two correlate to the carousel inner and of course our carousel item. Inside, this, this, I would say the last div and the second to last div is where I'm gonna appropriately put my buttons for previous and next. And they are buttons, we're gonna say button class equals carousel dash control dash previous. The type is gonna be a button, there we go. And since we're gonna run a room, I'm at the return key and I'm just gonna drop this down a little bit lower so I can see it a little better. And we'll have our button and our type. And then we're gonna have our data, bootstrap, target. Remember above we added that ID where I said we're gonna take care of it later? Well, now the ID carousel example captions is gonna be used below. I can copy this to make sure I spelled it appropriately. And I'm gonna add the target is equal to the ID of carousel example captions. Then what I wanna do is this data bootstrap slide is gonna be previous. So I put this in here and what I'll do is I'll have the button tag and inside of the buttons, let's just drop this down a little bit lower so we can see it a little better. Perfect. So inside this button, I'm gonna add a span. I'm gonna say span class equals carousel control, carousel I spelled properly, and then previous icon, and we'll say aria hidden equals true. And we'll open and close that span. It's a little hard to see, you can always drop down the class. So we'll just keep it with consistency here. Drop this down and drop that down just so we have our span tags all set to go. And after that span tag, what I'm gonna add is one more span to give it a name. So I'll say span class and we'll say visually hidden. And from here, what I will do is then say previous. Let's save this and then bring back up Chrome to make sure it's working. Perfect. We have our previous button. It looks great, but now it's time to add, of course, the next button. So what I can do is I can duplicate this. And since I have a little more space, what I'll do is I'm gonna do a little more control. And so I'll just pull this out a little bit better as now I can see the spans just a little stronger on the screen. And there we go. And I need to then put this one here. 
and we'll move the span back up just so we can see a little better. Perfect. So all of this button information corresponds to the previous. So I have to duplicate the button and add the next. So obviously if it says previous, what I want to do is I want to say next. So we'll change previous to next, prev or P-R-E-V to next. And then what we'll do is we'll change the previous to next. And the visually hidden, of course, we want to make sure it still says the word next. So now all of this area will change from previous to next. Now when I save it and refresh the page, now I have the previous icon going around and I have the next icon going around from slide to slide. Now we have that. What I next want to do is I want to add the indicators down here to show how many pictures are in my slideshow. This gives the user knowledge that it's not going to go on indefinitely, but it tells the person running the slideshow that there's three, four, five, however many pictures you have in your slideshow. Now again, because this slideshow is going to distract us from reading the code on the left versus the slideshow here, I'm going to hide Chrome for right now so we just have our code to look at. So what I want to do next is I want to add the indicators in this design. So up towards the top, what I have to do is where it says carousel example captions, the very top inside this div, the next one down below, if I indent in, what I want to do is I want to add a div class equals carousel indicators, indicators, if I spelled it right, oop, indicate, that's what I thought. I don't know why I put an A in there for some reason. Indicators, there we go. Making sure my spelling does count in this case, otherwise it will not work properly. What I want to do here is I'm going to say button. This will take a few different pieces of information. So I'm going to open and close this button and just drop it down for right now. There's nothing to be important to go in there. So inside this button, I'll drop the return key, indent, and inside the button, we're gonna say type is gonna be a button. Then we're gonna say is data BS target. And this one's gonna be the same as above. So this is gonna target the example captions ID. So we'll drop it in, example captions, or carousel example captions ID. Then we're gonna say data BS slide dash two, which is the first one to go to. Now in coding, zero is the first slide. So we'll say data BS slide two, zero. The class, we wanna have it as active. That's our first slide. And after that, we'll say aria current equals true. And aria label, oh, aria label, wow, that was a mess up, equals slide number one. And now we have that, we're going to add two more buttons. So we'll duplicate this button. Now let's just do this. Let's bring this up a little bit higher so the button and button is together. That's the first button. Then what I'll do is duplicate it again and one more time. So now I have to worry about this one. However, we don't need a class active because it's not gonna to need to be there. I messed those classes up before, I will not do it a third time. So let's take out those active states. Now, of course, we're not gonna go from zero, we're gonna to go to one. So we'll say one for the second one and slide two. I know the counting is a little bit off, but one goes to zero and zero goes to, or two goes to one. The slide two will say this one is gonna be two and this one goes to three. So making sure all three connect together. Now to have all these three placed in the right spot, let's bring back open Chrome and take a look. If I refresh the page, now we see at the bottom we have indicator one, indicator two, indicator three. If I click on that, it takes me to the third picture, second picture, and a first picture. So we've got the previous and next going on and we have our indicators of our three pictures. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in some captions to this design. So what I'm gonna do is come down to the carousel items and after the pictures. So inside, let's actually 
hide that because that's going to get really annoying after a while. So after the image tag, let's go back up to sailboat one. I'm going to add some captions. So what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to say div class and add a carousel caption. So this class is going to be carousel dash caption. And after carousel caption, I'm going to say D none and then D M D block to create the space for the caption to be in. After this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say H five just to give it not an H two, just because I'm probably going to have other H's around the areas. So the H five doesn't get in the way. I'll say first slide label. And then what I'm going to do is add a paragraph and say some place holder text to describe the image. And let's save that and take a look. We'll come back into Chrome, refresh the page, and first slide label. Now, of course, you can change whatever text you want on this page. I just have it as the de facto normal type that Bootstrap 5 gives me. And if I go through, there are no pieces of text here. So what I'll do, and I'll hide Chrome, so not seeing it around, is I'll duplicate this one more time. After the image tag, we'll drop it down, and we'll say second slide label and down here we'll go number three and say third slide label now we have one two and three and you can also make this whatever css style you want down the road the actual text and text design is entirely up to you but by default the captions go down to the bottom lower third of the picture now, if all of your pictures are dark, or I should say light, like this picture is, then you can choose to have dark mode, meaning everything will go to a darker color. So what I can do to go to dark mode is up at the very top, I'm looking for the container that holds the information in, and then down below the container, I'm looking for the class carousel space slide. After this, in the carousel space slide, I'm going to say, in this case, carousel dark, as I want to go to dark mode. So what's going to happen is notice when I refresh the page that this icon went dark and this icon went dark and this text is no longer readable. So you have to assess overall, are your pictures light or dark? Now, granted, you can change in CSS this text down below. So if you wanted one slide to be light, and one slide to be dark, you can change that slide to slide. But since these icons are controlled by dark or light, they are controlled by dark mode or light mode. So if you overall have pictures that are overall light, you're actually gonna wanna go into the dark mode versus if you have like this picture right here is light. So the ironic part about it is you'll wanna go dark mode if all your pictures are this light. However, I always feel that I usually keep it into the light mode unless I have to go dark. So I think about how that's set up and overall the white type behind the picture usually shows the best. Then again, if you have every picture this bright light, then it will be hard to read, thereby dark mode is the way to go. Now, if this rotation is too fast, what I can also do is slow it down. At the very beginning, I set up an interval speed. And that's actually the default speed is at 5,000. Let's say I want this to rotate so much faster. Hang on, this might give you whiplash. I'm gonna change this from 5,000 to 500 milliseconds. If I save this and refresh the page, this will go pretty much as fast as possible. Now, yes, this is way, way, way too fast. So the good part about this is that when I roll my mouse over it, it does stop rotating. But if I go off of it, rapid fire, it goes. If I change this from 500 or even 5,000, let's say 15,000, that's three times as slow as the 5,000 default. So if I bring it back, refresh the page, if I wait for essentially 15,000 milliseconds, Notice how when I'm talking, I'm not having my cursor over the slideshow, it doesn't move. So you have control over how fast 
or how slow you want it to rotate. That's also important because if you have a lot of text describing the picture, you want your user to read it, thereby you do not want it to go very slow. I've also built slideshows for clients that didn't want it to move almost at all because they wanted the user to control between the three pictures. And so I've set mine before like 150,000 where it nearly stops the slideshow from going at all, letting the user take their time. So it's up to you how you want to control the interval by changing the data BS interval at the very top. Now, if you prefer to have it more fade between pictures, because right now it's sliding from side to side. If I want more of a casual fade between them, one, I'm going to change this back from about 150,000 back to 5,000. But if I want to have a fade effect, well, let's say I want some text on the page. I wanted a soft, subtle fade between pictures. What I can do is up at the top where I have all my classes in the carousel slide where dark mode went. If I say slide and then I say carousel, carousel dash fade, that's going to allow me to fade the pictures between. So if I save this, refresh the page, now what's going to happen is they fade between each other. And the greatest part about all of this, it's completely responsive. If I move my browser a little bit this way, it's going to base upon the width of the design, but notice how it breaks based upon the breakpoints of this design. This is all in part because I use the container inside of Bootstrap 5. If you want more help regarding the container and the grid regarding Bootstrap 5, take a look at the videos I have here. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes.